Hello, we're in England, we're doing some antique stock. This is stock for collection in England. Windsor chairs, country chairs, cottage chairs, stick back chairs, lots of names, lots of issues. Let me give you some tips on what to look for. Be aware that these have been made the same for three to four hundred years. Um, and the style hasn't changed hugely. Every town has its own chair. You can look at this in books and each region has its own style. Uh, the Windsor chair is very well known. This is a Windsor chair, basic Windsor chair worth about two or three hundred pounds. I'll try and show you the features that make a better Windsor chair. Now we're going to start with the wear. Now you'll see that this is worn at the back. It should be like that. It's an inch and a half short at the back. This is created by wear. Um, because the back is worn, the front uh, legs are sticking out too, too much, like buck teeth. So you'll see that if it's the correct height, the proportions are better, the back's more upright. Wear is, is, is a common problem, um, and for a collector, they will not be too pleased if it's overworn. Splats. This is a beach splat. This chair is probably made in 1810 or 20. You can get earlier ones. Uh, and the, the collectors like earlier ones, and they are collecting these. In fact, some are now collecting Victorian ones. Uh, if you can find a used flat, you would, and that's really desirable. Uh, many are a fruit wood, and there are different fruit woods. The chair seat, this is L, the middle always L. L is a, is a good timber for me to make it with. They like to see it, a scallop seat, the more the better. They like to see a peak in the middle of the seat that goes between your legs. They like to see a shape to the front. They like to see a bow with no brakes. They like to see this bow with no brakes. They like to see a stretcher with not an H. They like to see a stretcher which has another bow in the bottom. They like to see that it's called a crinoline stretcher. C-R-I-N-O-L-I-N-E. Crinoline stretcher. They like to see... Uh, this is a... The turned column is the sign of a later chair. You like to see a, an arm supported by a curved piece of wood. It would be often a U-wood or something they have locally. So you can see that there are different dimensions which make them more appealing. They like a higher back. They like a, a, a gothic back. They like gothic pierced pierce splats. So there's lots of different things you find. Sometimes they have a little platform on the back with two sticks to support the rest. So there's a broad variety and you, you have to be aware that you can buy these chairs chair made in the Victorian era, you can buy these chairs that are made now and uh, a chair in a shop like that and now new is £800, a Victorian chair like that is £200, this is a 19th century chair with some issues and breaks, this is worth two or £300. This chair has the right structure, the right handle, no breaks, and slightly better splat, more of a shape on the front here, better scoop. And if that was going back to the 1600s or 1700s, you'd be looking at two to five thousand pounds for one chair. So huge, huge amount going on. People don't like, in England, don't like to use our antique chairs for parties anymore because children will rock on the back legs, they will break the chair. And you get into injury, you get into insurance problems, and you get into, it obviously, injured people, it will only injured chair. So there are not a lot of people who sit on antique dining chairs anymore. Uh, there are some, and those chairs have to be repaired, get broken, and get loose. Chairs are very inexpensive on the whole, but these country chairs, Windsor chairs, crofters chairs, smokers bows, these rural cottage farmhouse type chairs are extremely expensive. Anyway, I hope I've given you some interesting tips. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. <laughs>